Welcome to Church Online. My name is Jonathan Manna, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. We're about to go into a time of worship with music and singing, followed by a message from God's Word. And in total, our service will be just under an hour in length. And we believe God wants to speak into your life like never before. You know, at the beginning of 2020, we declared this to be a year of miracles. And at the time, little did we know that we'd find ourselves in a season where our world needs a miracle like never before. So as we get started, may you open up your heart and allow God to do what only He can do. Now, go get your Bible, your kids, and get ready to get your praise on. We're going to have a great service. Online. We're so excited to be with you in your living room or wherever you're watching this today. Listen, as we come, uh, these are uh, incredible moments that we have to spend together. And we believe that every time we gather as His church, wherever we are, where two or three are gathered, there He is. And so right wherever you are, just encourage you to lift up your eyes to heaven today. We're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to give Him our highest praise. And we're going to open our hearts not just our living rooms, but our hearts as well, and say, Holy Spirit, would you speak today like only you can? Would you join me as we pray? Father, we thank you this morning that we are here. And Lord, it's not by accident, but Lord, as we've intentionally made time to meet with you today, God, we just ask that your spirit would speak to us, speak to your church today, afresh and anew, God. Lord, we give you the highest praise. Come on, right where you are, just lift your hands to heaven today. And Father, we invite you here. Lord, where we are, you are. And Lord, I thank you that you dwell in the praises of your people. So hear us today as we praise, as we lift up the name above all names. In Jesus' name, let's worship church.
hear my heart surrender I tell my soul again You are Lord of all And though the seas are raging You will speak and tame them And you I find my rest You are in control The valleys I trust, your spirit is enough to keep me walking. You got my every step, speak life to me again. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. I lift my hands to heaven, hear my heart. Tell my soul again, you are Lord of all. Though the seas are raging, you will speak and tame them. You I find my rest, you are in control. of times like this that you are faithful lord that we realize all other ground is sinking sand but you are faithful lord and we thank you today that we can put our trust in a good god that we can put our trust in a strong god and that lord you are still mighty to save you're still mighty to deliver and so lord we thank you today that as your church we call upon the name of the lord and lord your word says call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And so, Father, here we are in the name of Jesus. Oh, we call upon you, Lord. As your church, we call upon the name, the name above every name. The name of Jesus is greater than any sickness. 
And so, Lord, we declare as your church, the name of Jesus is greater than COVID-19. And Father, we thank you that you still have a plan and a purpose for your church, but also for every individual and every family, Lord, that's meeting today, that is here, Lord, praying together, that is here calling on the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for healing today. Lord, if there are any among us that are sick, Lord, we just speak and declare the healing power of Christ over sick bodies today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we just pray for open hearts now as we get ready to hear the word in just a moment. Come and have your way, we pray, at such an opportune time in history, God, as the church takes the gospel of Jesus public online, on Facebook and on YouTube and wherever else this will be streamed. Lord, we just ask your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, we're going to have some announcements before we get to the word. And uh, we just thank you for worshiping with us today. As we adapt to doing life online, we want to let you know about some events that are coming up this week at Weston. On Tuesday and Wednesday at 12 p.m., we will be hosting a noon prayer and we'll be sending out a link via email soon, so please keep an eye out for that. As well, if you have a prayer request or if you have a testimony of answered prayer, email them to amen at westonroadchurch.com. Also, on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., I'll be hosting a midweek Devo at 7.30 p.m. on YouTube Live to bring you a message of hope. Also, Encounter Night is happening online next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. And lastly, Easter weekend is coming up and we're going to be having a Good Friday communion service as well as a Resurrection Sunday service. And we have an exciting opportunity for individuals as well as families to get involved. And we'll be sending out an email this week to give you more information on that. Doing church exclusively online has forced many of us to do some things we've never been comfortable doing before. Maybe like preaching a sermon online to the whole world or hosting online connect nights. And for some of us, it's giving digitally. We realize that this might be a stretch for some of you, but I also want you to know that you can give digitally anytime, safely and securely either through the Tithely app or simply by visiting our website, westonroadchurch.com forward slash give. For those who would rather take a different sort of risk, you can always write a check written out to Weston Road Pentecostal Church, head to your local post office and mail it uh, in person to the address on the screen. Listen, we're about ready to jump into the message and I believe that God is going to speak to you like only He can. So open up your heart, open up your notebook, and here's Pastor Miguel who's going to bring this week's word. All right, well, good morning. If you'd like to turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20, uh, I'm reading, going to be reading from the NIV version this morning, the New International Version. This passage of scripture that I'm about to read is going to be the backdrop of my message that is titled, I Am. Who is God to you? And let's go to verse 13. It says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, Peter, that on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be bound in uh, heaven." Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Let's pray. 
Lord, I want to thank you that we can gather this morning online, and I just pray that, Lord, that this word during this time would remind us of who you are. I pray that this morning your anointing would be on this word, that or people are gathered in their homes this morning watching this online, that they would feel and sense your presence in a real and a tangible way. And I pray they'd be challenged, but also encouraged at the same time, because our anchor and our hope is in you. So just continue to have your way, Lord God, in this service in your name. Amen. During this time of self-isolation, social distancing, I got a question to ask you. Are you, a half, are you half glass empty or a half glass full type of person? How do you look at things? Is it the world is falling apart and it's doom and gloom? Or are you like, hey, I see a lot of opportunities? I have to admit to you, personal confession here, full disclosure, uh, when I first found out that this was happening and that things were shutting down, I was very, very disappointed. I was really looking forward, my family and I, to our first March break here in Toronto to take the kids out and do a bunch of things we hadn't done before as a family. And then when this happened, all those plans went. My wife, I, you know, she may not like me saying this, but she was not too happy that being cooped up with the kids and they couldn't go outside or anything. But I was pretty shaken up in a sense that I was disappointed that we couldn't do those things. Another thing I was really looking forward to, but it got canceled due to the coronavirus, was March Madness. I love the March Madness basketball tournament, and the first time in my entire life I've seen that it's been canceled. So I was really, really looking forward to that. But then my perspective began to change a little bit. What ended up happening was, instead of complaining about what I didn't have and what I was losing, I started to look There was a shift. I started to see what was right in front of me, see the opportunities that I had. Opportunities like I get to spend some more time with my family, get to bond with my sons in a way that I hadn't bonded with them before. My wife and I are starting to have more meaningful conversations and deeper conversations. Not that we weren't before, but we're just having more of them. You know, spending more time bonding with my kids, not just with technology and TV, but you know, sitting down just playing board games with them. And out of that comes natural conversation, just getting to know them better and understand them. Distractions were stripped away. You know, my wife and I have been talking about starting a YouTube channel. There's been room and space now to do things that we hadn't done before. We actually just a few days ago just started doing a Facebook live chat, something we never even imagined doing. But we said, hey, let's do this. We want to bring some connection, bring some encouragement to people. And it's been great. Perspective is everything. Perspective does a lot. Perspective can make you and break you, especially during challenging times. Let me say this again. Perspective can make you or break you during challenging times. And at this moment, we are in uncertain times. So my question to you is, are you a pessimist or an optimist? Thanks to thesaurus.com, try and say that five times fast, here are some synonyms for perspective. Number one, angle. Two, aspect, attitude, context, mindset. Prospect, viewpoint, headset, frame of reference, way of looking. What angle are you looking at the situation at? What is your attitude during this time? What is your mindset? What is your frame of reference? How are you looking at things right now? The lens that you choose to view life through is reflected by the way you live your life. The lens in which you choose to view life through is reflected by the way you live your life. Your life lens will determine how you live your life. Let me say that again. Your life lens will determine how you live your life. And we all have a life lens. You know, when you get were born and you came into this world, your parents began to instill values and morals into you. And, you know, they started to teach you their viewpoint on how they saw the world. And so for a long time, you would see the world from their life lens. And then as you got older, as you started to work, you know, your bosses, your friends, school, they began to shape your life lens a bit. Everybody has a life lens. The question is, which one are you choosing to view life through? For me, for example, growing up, I didn't grow up in the greatest of homes. I had a broken family. So my viewpoint 
up until I was about 18, 20, was kind of shattered and broken. I viewed life through the lens of my dad, which was don't trust people because I was taught don't trust anyone. Everyone's out to get you. Everyone's out to hurt you. So I kept people at arm's length. Yes, I had many friends, but none of them were real, real close. I never let anyone get really, really close to me. And that's just how I viewed life for quite some time. And then as I got older, I also became a Christian. God did some work. He began to change some things in my life, began to help me open up, break some things. My lens changed again, and now I view things totally, totally different. And then when you start dating, and when I started dating, you know, my perspective changed again very, very differently. Now you're not just thinking about you, you're thinking about two. And then when I got married... Things changed again. Now I view things from a different point of view. And then when you have kids, for me, it's that way I viewed life through a totally different lens because now it's not just about me or my wife and I, but it's about my boys and I. So what life lens do you use to determine how you live your life? In the same way that perspective determines how you live this life, the same can be said in regards to our relationship with God. The lens that you choose to view God with will determine how you relate to God. The lens that you choose to view God with will determine how you relate to God. Now let me make this very clear. Your lens doesn't change who God is. It just changes how you relate to him. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the lens only chooses, changes how you relate to him. So this morning, I want to talk about three different lenses that people typically use to view God. And the first lens is the lens of circumstance. In the beginning of Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 to 4, and you can read that on your own at some time, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus, demanding that Jesus show them a sign that he is the Messiah. Matthew 16, verse 1 says this, The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him, by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. Now up until this point, Jesus had already done and performed many miracles. So it should have been obvious to them that he was the Messiah. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were Sadducee, could not view Jesus as the Messiah no matter how hard they tried. And this is because they viewed everything through the lens of their current circumstance. See, they were hoping, because they were under Roman rule, they were expecting a king to come and rescue them from the Roman Empire so that the Jews can rule and have a nation of their own. And so they, this forthcoming Messiah that was promised to come, they expected it totally different. They thought he was going to come in riding on a horse with an army and overthrow the Roman Empire. But that was not the case. Here Jesus came in. He was born in a manger. He was a carpenter's son. And he was not, in their eyes the deliverer they were looking for. And so for their current circumstance, it was hard for them to see that Jesus had a, was part of a much grander plan other than just rec- rescuing them from the Roman Empire. And a lot of us can relate to the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the same way. We can see things based on our current circumstances and are so focused on what is going on in our life or what is going on around us that we can't see God and what he's doing in the midst of anything and everything. No matter how hard we look, because we're so focused on the here and the now and what's going on and the craziness, we don't know who God is or can't see him anywhere. But God is still the same and he's still there. So the lens of current circumstance can blind you from what is right in front of you. You see, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had close proximity to Jesus because they encountered him and talked with him on many different occasions. But they only saw him as an ordinary carpenter's son, some guy who, honestly, they didn't have the time of day for. And his disciples, on top of that, even added to that notion. Because his disciples, when the Pharisees saw them, they saw them as unschooled, unskilled, people not worthy to be, be disciples or rabbis at all. But Jesus saw different. He saw Peter as a person that was ready to change the world. He was going to build the church. His other disciples, the same thing. Even though Judas was amongst them, God saw something different. Jesus saw something different in them. But because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were so focused on what was going on around them and that the Roman Empire was ruling over them and that this promised Messiah that they were hoping for would come and rescue them, they couldn't see that the Son of God was right in front of their face. 
a lot is going on currently in our world right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things that have changed. You know, a lot of us are in self-isolation. A lot of us have to work from home. Or you're not allowed out of your place for quite some time. There's a lot of businesses that have been shut down because they're considered not essential. And, and you know what? There are people that are being laid off. There are things that are affecting a lot of people's lives in different ways. And yes, I'm not going to lie, the circumstances could be tough for some of you out there. But the question is, are you viewing everything through your current circumstance only, so much so that you can't see who God really is at this point? Because God is still working. God is drawing his people closer to him. Don't stay away from God just because you are so focused on what is going on right now. But during this time, I encourage you to lean in, to dive in, to get closer to him more than ever before. Because God is still there. God is bigger than the current circumstance. So the challenge today in this point is to actually change your lens. Don't look at the current circumstance, but begin to ask God to change your lens to see him in this circumstance and how he can use you in this time. The second lens that people use to view God is religion. Matthew 16 verses 1 to 4 says, The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, When evening comes, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today, it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left and went away. They were not only focused, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, on their circumstance, but they were blinded by their traditions and their rituals. There are some of you right now that you are blinded by your rituals and your traditions. The lens that you choose to view God is with tradition and ritual. You honor him with your lips, but your hearts are very far from him. You may attend church, you might be even watching this right now, just because it's something you've been taught to do since you were a kid. Or maybe, you know what, I have nothing else to do right now, so I'm going to try this out and see what happens. And that's okay to a certain point. But religion and tradition does not mean that you have a relationship with Christ. God is calling us to have a deeper relationship with him, deeper than just religion and tradition. You see, the Pharisees had a lot of traditions. They actually had traditions on, 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 up on uh, traditions. So it was crazy. So there was like, here's this rule. You shouldn't do anything on the Sabbath. Then there was this other rule on top of that. And then there was another rule on top of that so that you didn't violate this. But it got to the point that it was crazy. It got to the point that no one had access to God or could not, or could not relate to God. And it became a barrier of entry. And so if you're one of those people that, you know what, maybe on occasion you'll turn into the odd service online or when it's time to gather again, maybe you just show up once in a while or maybe you actually are present but you don't engage just because, hey, I've been taught if I go to church, I'll be a good person, everything's okay. God is calling you to deeper than that. You see, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, these teachers of the law, who should have known better, they were blinded by their own traditions. They couldn't see that God was doing something new. He was doing something fresh by also honoring the traditions at the same time. They were so focused on this is how we do things that they would not be open to what God is doing. And so my question to you is, are you stuck in a tradition? Are you stuck in a mindset of how things used to be done? Maybe, you know what, the lens that you have right now is, back in the good old days, God moved this way, the Holy Spirit did this, used to do that. And you're just stuck there and you're like, well, God is not moving now, the Holy Spirit's not doing anything today. That's not true. You just have the wrong lens on. God is doing some awesome things, has been doing some awesome things, and he's going to continue to do some awesome things. But he is saying today, don't get stuck with the lens of tradition. Don't be stuck with the perspective of tradition. I believe during this time of self-isolation, social distancing, that God is wiping away lenses, breaking lenses, moving distractions out of the way, and calling his people to draw closer to him like never before, because he wants people to see God for who he truly is. 
see himself for himself and for nothing else. And so I think during this time, yes, it stinks that you're looking at the four walls, but it's also a time where God is going to truly show up in ways that we never expected. And we're going to learn some new things about God, but we're also going to draw deeper and closer to him. And so that brings me to my third point today is the lens that you ultimately want to use to view God is through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 17, it says this, that when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then Jesus replied in verse 17, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Who do you say I am? What is very interesting is up until this point, Even though the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, couldn't see Jesus for who he truly was because they were blinded by so many lenses, the disciples themselves up until this point weren't even 100% sure who Jesus was. Even though they already spent lots of time with him, even though they witnessed firsthand, a firsthand account of the many miracles that he had done, they still weren't sure if he was the Messiah or not. It wasn't until this point in verse 16 that things had changed because now the Holy Spirit had revealed to Peter himself that Jesus is the Messiah. In verses 16 and 17, everything changes. The perspective of the disciples themselves change. Their eyes are opened and they have a new revelation now that Jesus is more than just a carpenter's son that is capable of doing miracles, but that he is the Messiah. And you have to understand when Jesus says, or when Peter says, sorry, that you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, in actual Greek, the word you there in verse 16 is actually plural. And he's actually speaking on behalf of all of the 12 disciples and saying that we recognize that you are the Messiah. So my question to you is this morning, who is God to you? What perspective are you looking at him with? Is he Lord of all? Is he Santa Claus? Is he a God that you turn to only when things are bad? Is he one that maybe you send a text to every so often? Is he one where you just show up at Easter, Christmas, and Thanksgiving? Who is God to you? I believe that today that the Lord wants to change your viewpoint and your lens. Maybe you're looking at him through a lens of the past, of circumstances, of religion, of pain, of hurt. Maybe you have a healthy lens Whatever the lens is, if you have a healthy lens, God wants to take you to a deeper place. He wants you to deep dive this morning into a deeper place and a deeper intimate relationship with him. But if you are viewing it with a different kind of lens other than the Holy Spirit, I believe that today and even during this time of social distancing and self-isolation, he wants to strip away those lenses and he wants to put a new lens on you. So as I was putting this message together, I just felt the Lord say to me, remind the people of who I am. You know, he he reveals himself as I am. God doesn't just reveal himself as I am, but he has many different names. So this morning, I'm going to read off some names to you just to remind you of who exactly God is. God says that I am who I am. You can find that in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. He says that I am all powerful. He is your provider. He is peace. He is just. He is holy. He is your redeemer. He is omnipresent. He is mercy. He is sovereign, he is your comforter, he is the almighty, he is the beginning and the end, he is your refuge, he is the king of kings, he is the lion and the lamb, he is your redeemer, he is your resurrection, he is the rescuer, he is the prince of peace, the son of God, the holy trinity, God the father, God the son, and God the holy spirit. And he says, I am blank, fill it in with whatever you need, I am him. So my challenge to you this morning, my question to you is, who is God to you? Is he truly the living God? Is he the one that is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Last week, you know, our lead pastor, John, talked about 
God being our anchor, that our anchor and our hope is in Jesus Christ. Is he your anchor and your hope this morning? Or is it just a message that you heard and you were like, hmm. Is he truly your anchor? Is he truly your hope? Is he truly your peace? Is he your joy? Is he your firm foundation? Is he your solid rock? And maybe there are some of you this morning that are watching this and you have no idea who Jesus is. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about Jesus or maybe you're, you're hearing about God or maybe you've heard about him before but you're feeling something tugging at you to want to view God differently. And that is the Holy Spirit just tugging on your heart and prompting you saying, hey, draw closer to me. And if that is you this morning and you just want to take this opportunity to actually have a relationship with Christ and just draw closer, I'm just going to ask you to pray this prayer with me this morning. There will be a thing, on, uh, if you're, depending on where you're watching from, you can click and just say, hey, I would like to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And someone will get in contact with you and just reach out to you and pray with you. But I just want to lead you into this prayer. So just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And I want to thank you for saving me. And thank you for rescuing me. I surrender my life completely to you this morning and I give it all to you. And I ask that you would be Lord of my life and that you would absolutely have your way in me now. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and forgive me of my sins. In your name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, there's going to be, uh, you know, please click, yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ. Also, online, there's also a link that you should see coming up right now that will have a connect card. Please fill that out. I promise we're not going to spam you or anything like that. We just want to get some information to you to help you on your journey with Christ. We also just want to connect to you and reach out to you and just say, hey, congratulations, welcome to the family of God. But for those of you that know Christ, this morning, my challenge to you is this to remember who God is. Remember the God that you serve. During these times of uncertainty and what's going on, remember that God is your provider, that he is I am the great I am, that he is the spirit of the living God, that he is your comforter, he is your peace, he is your joy, he is your firm foundation, he is gentle, he is love, he is everything that you need. And so let me just pray this prayer over you this morning. And I pray that you be reminded of who God really is. That when you, when you ask yourself who is God to you, it is revealed to you that he is truly your God of anything and everything. And that the circumstances will not break you. That tradition will not break you. What's going on in this world will not break you right now. But that God will help you stand in anything and everything. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you this morning for this opportunity to gather online. And I pray that our eyes would be open to who you really are. More and more, especially during these times now where we have more time on our hands, where we don't have sports and other things on, on the TV or other things to distract us. I pray that this morning that our hearts would be drawn closer to you to lean in more to what you're saying. I pray that through this, Lord God, that our desire would rise up within each of us to just spread more seed of your word, to spread the message so that others that don't know you would come to know you. I ask that this morning that, Lord God, that if there are those that are viewing who you are and are distant from you because of certain circumstances, things that have happened in the past, uh, tradition, you know what it is that, Lord, those lenses would be broken this morning, that perspectives would be changed, that, Lord, that healing would happen. I pray for your protection on everyone that is watching this online and those that aren't watching this online right now, and I pray for your healing power during this time of the coronavirus. We thank you for everything. We thank you for who you are in your name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.